A very warm welcome to you. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on this edition of Our Moon Finance and Wealth Report. I am Olua Femi Inobong Itsunu. On this edition, we join Faith and our guests on the town hall for the continuation of their session on insurance laws and challenges of implementation in Nigeria. As always, it's a no holds barred session. So do take a listen. We have people who left civil service who died in the last four years whose dependents are wallowing in poverty. So the implementation, like he said and like Madame said, government should drive the pattern for implementation by taking ownership, by being responsible. On this edition also, we'll bring you a special report on the challenges of data development in the Nigerian insurance industry. Not forgetting also our industry icon segment. These and many more are what we have for you for this week. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Details shortly. We'll be right back. Having insurance is like having an army or a police force. Having these shows you are ready for your enemies should they decide to attack. The enemies may never attack, but you must always have your defenses ready and prepared. My question therefore is how do we move from where we are now that like even governments some of their buildings are not insured how do we move and get everybody on board so that some of these laws can actually be implemented for the benefit of the ordinary nigerians but the way forward is for collaboration like mr Deda said between law enforcement and the industry but i'll tell you that the law enforcement are not eager to like, collaborate with the industry because they do not see themselves as stakeholders. So how do you make them so stakeholders? The, yes, like you said. I think it's continuous you, education. It's continuous we need to education. continuously engage them. the law enforcement agents to them. see the needs of what they need to do. Take for example, even when the policeman is checking for your vehicle license on the road, it's a source of revenue to the country. That is the focus. The focus is there must be revenue coming to us for the use of the vehicle on the road, it's like a road tax. Yeah. Therefore, using the vehicle, people can be knocked down on the road. And in fact, there are many hit and run drivers that have hit somebody, they run away, nobody compensates anybody. So, even apart from knocking somebody, they destroy public facilities. They knock down road electric walls, poles, they damage things. And I believe, like you said, government should be reawakened to its responsibility. No, the government First and foremost, be... they should buy insurance. Secondly, they should ensure that the law is enforced and people are punished when they are wrong. And on our own side too, like you said, publicity is key. Like, uh, look at the Texaco fire that happened about three, four years ago. Billions of naira was paid. The Coca-Cola laws, all of those things are there. Even when there was this uh, ADC crash, Mr. Fala Daniel said, look, whatever the case is, make sure the victims are compensated. All of them were compensated. In fact, the Dana is a recent example. Uh, uh, the Dana has paid mm -hmm. so much money to people who lost their lives. So the market is actually responding. But we need to actually go a step further. Maybe timely payment of these claims so that people do not grumble too much. Mm -hmm. And also to publicize when these claims are made. But very importantly, we need to educate the public on the importance of insurance and the public itself should be willing to come and enforce their rights when the claims Media occur claims. so that the market will have a balance. While we, while we cover you for insurance, when the risk occurs, we also come to your aid in a timely manner so that every person can feel, they can feel the importance 
of the insurance. It's just like you go to your bank, you want to withdraw your money, you fill your check, the cashier gives you the money. But the day you fill the check and the cashier tells you, wait, you are waiting three, four, five hours, the money is not forthcoming, you start to feel somehow. The same thing when people have claims, and the claims are not timely dispensed of, they begin to feel, feel, they begin to feel a sort of regret, begin to lose confidence. So we need to build confidence with the insuring public. First of all, by paying all genuine claims within the time provided by the laws. And, and I think that the uh, insistence on the no premium, no cover provision, which has been there in the law, Section 51 of the Insurance Act, has been a very, very good thing. And also that even up to the Supreme Court, it has been said is a condition precedent but the valid, the valid policy but the problem again is goes back to government <laughs> government being the largest employer of labor, labor. Mm. Biggest buyer, biggest the buyer. pensions reform act says you buy life insurance policies compulsory group life yes yes but for your, uh, your employees. employees up to four times their salary three times or three, 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 three or four times, times. okay they are they, they are monuments now, in practice, the HOS is responsible and takes out the policies or something. From the cases we read, that was the case that involved a Jayakuta steel or something, where at the end of the day it was discovered there was no policy because the premium was never paid. You know, the premium should be paid on time and they'll drag their foot until the period is over. I said, the period is over. What if a claim comes within that period? No premium, no cover. Well, they will, they will, the government will find a way to manage the... So there's no, it shouldn't be managed. It's a question of being transparent. Government leading by example. example. Paying as and when due. When you do that, then you have the moral right to insist. Maybe, maybe talking about payment, I think we need to have a proper budget process. Thank you. Whereby every establishment will provide for insurance in its budget. They provide, because if it's but not provided for, then it cannot be accounted for. So I want to appeal government establishments provide for insurance and also ensure that the monies are also released. There's a provision, there's also a release option. So that the monies are released in the market, so that the market itself can think, actually respond. I think Mr. Data has so given government soft landing. <laughs> Why did you say that? I say this because as a broker, I know civil servants who died during the gap time of no premium no cover in 2013. Those six months, those who died between May and December 2013, whose dependents have not been settled up to now. When we advised them, they said they will pay. Like you said, they will find a way to pay. But most of them have not been settled. But you see, if you take premium, which is supposed to be a function of liability, you set it aside, then you also are helping the government to develop a very heavy, heavy, heavy cash flow support. Mitigating against losses is not the business of the government. It's the business of the insurance person, the insurance company that has taken out a policy that has been paid government levy every year. So in, in government doing that, that is some kind of uh, illegality. You are not empowering the industry itself when you now say, you are zooming your risk. You are like the top party cover that he's talking about. If you can imagine the millions of number of cars, if the sum of 5,000 has been paid for top party cover in respect of those cars, do you know how much job, how many jobs it have created, how much money it have made available to the economy, how much peace of mind you are given government itself. But you have people who left civil service who died in the last four years whose dependents are wallowing in poverty. So the implementation, like he said, and like Madame said, government should drive the pattern for implementation by taking ownership, by being responsible. But the truth of it is not only government that defaults. You know, even private companies, individuals, they also default. So whoever has a responsibility should, should try and at least fulfill his responsibility. That's what I believe. Not, not, let us not be too hard on the government. <laughs> no, no, because no, even no, the individuals, no. many individuals drive cars. Many individuals drive cars. 
nobody will have the moral nobody nobody will have the moral obligation the policeman see see Mojito, what more what moral logic will anybody have i'm a policeman my colleagues have been killed the dependents are suffering they've been driven out of the barracks for me to be asking the ordinary man on the road do you have insurance when yes, when I've not seen it, uh, when I've not seen the benefit part of, of insurance. insurance. It's How can I take ownership of something that I do not have? Example. I agree with you. I cannot you. take ownership of something that I do not have, or that I do not believe in. But I believe the government will make a change. But it's all because of this us. Is, this what is this every, is everybody. And in fact, with the Minister for Finance had promised that she will be part of the relaunch of the initiatives of the market to ensure that everybody does insurance properly. Uh, and, and the, in the, in the and, conference and the in Abuja, law, she yes, promised. And the new law should be passed. The new law should be passed. The new law should be passed. It's actually taking too long. It's actually taking too long. Actually taking too long you know? People need to re retweak it. Because yes. things change, the conditions change, need to be retweaked. Where can be published again, yes. being risk-based. You know, why I was talking, well, initially I said, a regulation and the laws, we can say yes and no. Because our laws are too general. Our laws are, have a tendency to be too detailed. Whereas what you need is just the, the framework. framework. Yeah, maybe we we'll go back to our all, all our basic laws and our constitution. A frame, and a frame, Many just a framework. The same the, for the 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 but, yeah. but, but every year we want we are to amending, legislate for every everything. Every year we are amending everything. our own constitution. It's not. So, so. It, it doesn't make for proper. Uh, an effective coordination. There cannot be one law once you fit all. Mm -hmm. Cannot be. It cannot be rewarding. It cannot be. Rewarding. I agree with you, Prof. See, my Prof, be. talking about risk uh, based regulation, I think NICOM is tending towards that. Because the era of saying everybody go and look for five no, no, it's not. Actually, that is the new trend That's in the new world. Trend. In the That's world, the regulation trend. today is going mm. to be based, 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 based on the risk. Yeah. Amount of yeah. risk. Yeah. 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 what your capital yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. be. You find that and some of these companies are going over capitalized. Mm -hmm. Some may be overcapitalized, some may be undercapitalized. It depends on your risk exposure to determine what level of capital you need to carry. Okay, now let's bring it back to this um, issue of sanctions with this compulsory insurances. Now, how do we get uh, people? I was having, I had a conversation with my sister who lives abroad, and she was saying that while she was in Nigeria, she saw something when she got to Canada. It's quite different. That if you are driving on the road and a policeman stops you for any kind of infraction, that it's not they are not really concerned about the money you're going to pay. They are more concerned about changing yeah, your mentality, mentality about attitude. so you understand what why you have you, done, what done wrong. <laughs> and why this is the penalty for what you have done. But we don't have that here. So how do we get people... Maybe, uh, take for example now, when the police are checking for particulars on the road, I've been seeing them doing a very good job. I have seen the, the, the police even the road safety and the vehicle inspection officers using the electronic device provided by the industry today. They need to go a step further. Anybody who has defaulted, impound the car and let him go and buy the insurance before coming to take his car. By the time you do that to one, two, three, four, five, the I message will go far. Now. That's what they do now. The message will go and then the tendency that the compliance level will improve. Then in the case of public buildings, let the fire service carry out inspections and seal up buildings. By the time okay, two, Mr. three, Dada, four buildings are actually sealed, sealed up, up in a particular area, the news will go around. Okay, Mr. Dada, he, Mr. Gunter then mentioned something. And at the yearly uh, insurance consumers forum that we organize, the fire service, they've been there and two years back to back, they've complained about the fund that is supposed to be provided for. Mm -hmm. as Stated in the law, but it's yeah, it's, it's, it's not there. So and I think it's more of an administrative issue, really. It's an administrative <laughs> issue between the insurance commission and the various fire services nationwide. It's not only just one state fire service. I know the whole country. Even anybody that is involved in firefighting can benefit from that fund. There's a special fund for that, which is a proportion of the fire premium. But let us ask ourselves: Have they actually helped us in growing the business? The fire service have they helped us? They have not helped us. So is is a question of so they need to help. help yeah they, yeah they need, they need to help yeah yeah they need to help it was them to hand the money yeah, and I believe they should hand the money yeah they should hand it by actually going out to enforce you see you see you go you don't say you are a stakeholder when you're not taking ownership I stand there because I'm an operator in this industry 
Madame is there because she is a stakeholder. So if you do not share the risk <laughs> and you do not carry the burden of implementation and enforcement. And you want the money. And you want the money. No way. It doesn't work out. Money. Where will the money come from? No, let them be more visible. See, what is really in that thing is that any house that has a fire insurance cover should carry the fire service badge. That is paid for. It carries the fire service certificate. Fine. Those are the things that they have to put together to hand the money that we've been doing this with. You don't, they don't have to wait till they go to put out a fire before they benefit from the thing. But you ah, mean, you they don't even put out the fire by the time you come, the whole place is gone. Yes. So yeah, yeah, on the light the light the light light most time before you call there's no water. See, what they're supposed to be doing... The ladder is not taller than the water. What they're supposed to be doing is to ensure that for occupation, this place is safe. When visitors come here, they are not at any risk. I've seen places where soccer ways are just covered with uh, zinc. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have cases of children and animals falling into them. Then it is only when you have fire that you know of the fire service. These are part of their jobs. Even if you have uh, a condemned uh, soak, soak away pit, mm -hmm. or your well is no longer functioning, or some things are hanging precariously, it's part of their job. In fact, the news reported a woman trying to a rescue man. her chair yeah. who fell into a well. A goat mm. fell into a well and in trying to rescue something happened. She fell in and, and yeah. died. Yeah. So if they want the money, like he said it's an administrative issue, maybe part of the administrative thing is that there's not been any report or all this is request for money. But if they behave like stakeholders, they can grow the business. They can. They can. They can grow the business. Do you know in Lagos alone, it is said that we have over 50 million vehicles. And less than 3 million are insured, even the minimum cover, third party. Let's assume the 15 million vehicles are insured. That is 5,000 times 15 million. That's about, some, about how much? Yeah, but but that, 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 also, that also multiplies your exposure too for your information. No, we are doing exposure let's, will let's, increase. Let's, let's have the risk. Good. Then we now manage the exposure. We, we can't run it, we can't say because of exposure, that, because of course, one a premium is a function of liability. Let the liability come. Then you don't have to spread your liability. You have a secondary insurance and the rest. Fine, we know those ones. Right, moving on. Nigeria's foremost rating company, Augusta and Co's recent survey shows that 138 million Nigerians do not trust the concept of insurance. Now, what can the industry do to change the mindset of this group of Nigerians? This is where data comes in. But inadequate research and data has proven to be a major impediment to the growth and development of the industry. This week, we examine the challenges of data development in the Nigerian insurance industry in a special report. Do enjoy it. Insurance is the bedrock on which modern society thrives. As risk bearers, risk management has always been an integral part of the insurance business, not just in Nigeria but in other parts of the world. Firms succeed through their ability to identify and manage risks facing their clients, either individuals or corporate clients. But the nature of risks that insurers need to manage is changing, especially on the investment side of the business. Insurers face persistently low interest rates and fluctuating equity market returns which has made it impossible for them to pay good dividends to their shareholders who are most often angry at the regulators. You may also be aware that of, uh, of recent news publication in the media being orchestrated by shareholders of insurance companies putting the blame of the inability of companies to pay 
them dividends squarely on the 1% insurance levy, fines, and penalties paid to NICOM. We have refrained from joining issues with, with the shareholders on the pages of newspapers because we want to believe that they are deliberately being misinformed and misled by management of some of the insurance companies to cover up the gross financial mismanagement in these companies. Today, insurers need a more dynamic approach to meet their liabilities. This often entails increasing allocation to more complex asset classes. To manage risk and optimize performance across a highly diversified multi-asset class portfolio, insurers need timely, accurate data and the ability to test multiple scenarios quickly and efficiently. Some of the most high-profile regulations set exacting new standards for the way insurers manage their data. Risk-based supervision is a structured supervisory approach that aimed at identifying the most critical risk that face each company. Most critical risk here is referring to inherent risk that an insurance company faces. Is either by the nature of his business, he faces it, or it could even be generated by him internally. So the risk event may be external and internal to an organization. So also it is to us. Now, and that face each company, like you said, and through a focused review by the supervisor to assess the company's management of those uh, risks and the company's financial vulnerability to potential adverse uh, experience. This combination of a dynamic market environment and a more stringent regulatory regime creates the need for stronger data systems and analytics. More than ever, chief investment officers of insurance companies need readily available data on investment opportunities and risks. Valid data helps insurers to both manage risks in the portfolio and make the right decisions to optimize returns. It is an intensely challenging time for insurers as they need more sophisticated tools to manage multi-asset portfolios as they also need to master regulatory complexity. These issues are putting huge strains on insurers' existing data systems. Risk-based provision has confused a lot of um, listeners to the name, including the operators and the journalists. For that reason, we decided to make it the subject of this interaction and this outing. We're going to make a presentation on risk-based supervision as basic as we can, so that you will appreciate the need for the establishment of that approach, which is the international norm. And you will also, by the end of it, hopefully understand the role of each of the parties in the establishment of that supervisory approach. That includes the role of the insurance company and that of the regulator. Insurance regulation has since moved to exclude supervision of the companies, which is what regulators used to do. And it used to consume a lot of time of regulators. And there's no regulator in the world that has the capacity to regulate and also supervise the activities of management of our companies. In that respect, the board was identified to be the best unit in the corporate structure to do supervision. Drivers of change in the insurance industry include more stringent risk management standards. Regulators are demanding greater transparency. The data challenge is to collect, extract, standardize and report on the right information. Another driver of change in the industry is competitive pressure. Insurers 
needs to identify opportunities for performance improvements and enhancing investment returns. For this, they need tools that enable better allocation decisions and ability to execute rapidly on opportunities. Day brings you our Pidgin English program, Waiting Insurance Day Do Self, with different guests every week, airing live on Niger FM 102.7 at 9.45 a.m. every Wednesday. That is our time for this week. I do hope you enjoyed every moment spent. Join us again next week for a fresh package. But in the meantime, feel free to join the conversation on all our social media platforms. Also remember that this program airs on BCOS Television Ibadan every Thursday at 6 p.m. I am Oluwa Femi Enobongitunu, and many thanks for watching. So from all of us here, we say bye-bye.